Have you ever thought of an aircraft that does not have to be in an aircraft carrier to traverse the wide ocean and fly to its target? Instead, it will just cross the ocean like a conventional boat. This concept may be an interesting idea, but did you know that it almost took off during the 50s? Yeah, the 50s is a very weird but innovative era for aviation, and this particular aircraft speaks for it. The U.S. Navy set out to drastically alter naval aviation during the height of the Cold War in the 1950s. The XF-2Y1 Sea Dart, a seaplane with the goal of breaking the rules of carrier-based aircraft and approaching supersonic speeds, was the center of attention for this high-stakes project. With its distinctive hydro skis, which are made to glide over water and then shoot upwards with a thrill, this delta-winged marvel, created by Convair's creative geniuses, slashed through traditions. Beyond just an aircraft, it was a daring technical feat designed to render aircraft carriers obsolete and outmaneuver the opposition with unparalleled agility. Power and speed were on display when the Sea Dart, outfitted with its twin Westinghouse engines, thundered across the ocean. Nestled under its streamlined body, the hydroskis smoothly unfurled, slicing through the waves as the aircraft rocketed up to takeoff velocity. Armed with unguided rockets and Colt Mark 12 guns, the aircraft was a hybrid of a warrior and a waterbird, and the pilots controlled it from within the cockpit. However, under the screaming engines and white froth, there lurked a haunting whisper of the Sea Dart's imminent battle with the elements a battle that would finally push this revolutionary machine to its breaking point. The XF-2Y1 Sea Dart, a revolutionary supersonic seaplane, was the cornerstone of the United States Navy's bold endeavor known as the Mobile Base Concept, which sought to redefine naval aviation and extend naval air power to the furthest reaches of the globe while the world struggled with the tensions of the Cold War in the turbulent 1950s. The U.S. Navy threw down a challenge to the aviation industry in the late 1940s, create a supersonic interceptor aircraft that could operate from aircraft carrier decks. This was the beginning of this amazing aircraft. The Navy had good reason to be concerned, as there was much doubt at this period of time regarding the viability of launching supersonic planes from these floating platforms. Extensive takeoff rolls, high approach speeds, and subpar stability and control characteristics were all the hallmarks of many early supersonic designs, all of which would have been problematic for any aircraft meant for carrier service. Renowned aircraft company Convair rose to the occasion with an audacious and creative idea to solve this formidable problem. The idea of a fighter with delta wings that could fly from the water's surface would transform carrier-based aviation. Ernest Stout, the head of Convair's Hydrodynamic Research Laboratory, headed a group of brilliant engineers that came up with the groundbreaking concept of an airplane that could really take off from the water using retractable water skis. The XF2Y1 Sea Dart became the realization of this bold idea. It was a fighter jet that did not operate from an aircraft carrier and was built to overcome the same difficulties that had beset earlier planes. Its special design could make it unnecessary for supersonic aircraft to do the lengthy takeoff rolls that have hampered them. Furthermore, its fast approach speeds and stability issues would vanish. Reduced susceptibility to enemy assaults was another benefit of not having a traditional runway on the water's surface, which was especially important during the Cold War. When the Navy approved Convair's proposal in 1951, an order for two prototype Sea Dart aircraft was placed. Remarkably, the Navy was so confident in this groundbreaking design that even before a single prototype had taken to the skies, it committed to acquiring 12 production aircraft. 
the XF2Y1C Dart had an inevitable future as a pioneer in the aviation industry. It was the world's first delta-winged seaplane, the first combat-type aircraft with retractable hydroskis, and the first ever seaplane to go supersonic. Retractable skis were cleverly used in place of traditional landing gear as one of its most notable characteristics. They were made to conquer not only the sky, but also the sand, the water, and snow. The hydro skis were retracted for takeoff, and the sea dart skimmed the surface of the water at a speed of just 9 to 11 miles per hour. As the aircraft gained speed, the skis expanded smoothly, reaching their maximum extent at 45 to 55 miles per hour. At this moment, the sea dart's power hit 145 miles per hour, the takeoff speed. Amazingly, these skis included wheels, which made it possible for the sea dart to glide effortlessly into and out of the water. A single ski was even a feature of a certain variant. Several waterproof compartments in the lower fuselage of the sea dart prevented it from sinking in the event of damage. During surface taxiing, the dive brakes located on the lower rear fuselage functioned as both a water brake and a water rudder. The sea dart glided smoothly through the water while it was at rest, its twin hydro skis and trailing edge of wings skimming the surface. This amazing aircraft maintained its unusual stance, with the trailing edge of its wings softly brushing the water, even at low speeds. The Sea Dart was sent to the calm waters of San Diego Bay in December 1952, where it was to undergo its first testing. With plans to equip it with a battery of folding fin unguided rockets and four 20mm Colt Mark 12 guns, this future aircraft promised to be a terrifying weapon. Though the route to realization would be everything but simple, the vision was clear. The Westinghouse XJ46WE02 turbojets, which were fitted with afterburners to provide remarkable thrust, were the engine of the Sea Dart. One important design aspect for a maritime aircraft is the prevention of spray ingestion, which is why the intakes were placed strategically high above the wings. But even with careful preparation, carrying it out would quickly prove to be quite difficult. The XJ46WE02 engines were supposed to power the prototypes, however they were not available. Rather, the far less powerful twin Westinghouse J34WE32 engines propelled the Sea Dart into flight. The Sea Dart would later regret this first flight. On January 14, 1953, E.D. Sam Shannon made the unplanned maiden flight of the Sea Dart when he inadvertently became airborne during a quick taxi run. However, the official first flight was scheduled for April 9, 1953. But preliminary flight testing revealed a formidable challenge. The prototype Sea Darts lacked sufficient power. Even though the J34WE32 engines were only meant to be a small portion of the anticipated production engine's power, the difference was noticeable. To make matters worse, freshwater injection systems had to be developed since saltwater penetration into the engines continued despite the high mounted intakes. To reach supersonic speeds, the aircraft's fuselage also needed to be converted into an area rule body, which came at a hefty cost. The Sea Dart encountered several difficulties in the early stages of development, which reduced its functionality. This aircraft was slow because of the weak engines that drove it. The goal of the then novel hydro skis was to facilitate water landings and takeoffs. They turned out to be less effective than expected, though. The hydro skis, with their shock absorbing legs, produced tremendous vibrations during takeoff and landing. These problems were a significant obstacle, indicating that the sea dart was still becoming used to the sea. There were more issues when the plane encountered choppy waters. 
Any expectations of open sea recovery attempts were scuppered by its incapacity to withstand unfavorable weather and choppy waters. The flaws of the sea dart were becoming more and more obvious. In an effort to find a solution during these difficulties, the sea dart prototype underwent a number of changes. Impressively, the experimental single ski arrangement outperformed the original twin ski design. Throughout 1957, the engineers persistently experimented with various ski configurations. Though progress was made in improving the skis and landing gear, the Sea Dart's ungainly performance remained a significant hindrance. With its J-34 engines, the aircraft was simply unable to reach supersonic speeds in level flight. The problem was made worse by its antiquated pre-area rule form, which increased transonic drag. A similar attempt was made, but with less success, by the Saunders Row firm in the United Kingdom across the Atlantic. They put out the idea of a fighter with skis, but it was not well received. The US Navy investigated the intriguing concept of a submarine aircraft carrier that could accommodate three sea dart aircraft. These planes would be brought to the surface by a portside elevator after being kept in pressure chambers concealed beneath the submarine's hull. Although this idea had potential, it was never developed past the conceptual level. Obstacles that were structural in nature, such the elevator hole weakening the hull and the difficulties of transferring the weight from an elevator that was loaded to the hull construction, couldn't be overcome. The Convair Sea Dart set off on a turbulent voyage to become the world's first and only supersonic seaplane during the Korean War, coinciding with the birth of the jet era. This trip revealed the enormous hurdles of producing a seaplane that could reach spectacular speeds. From the beginning, the development of the Sea Dart was beset by challenges. The aircraft's overall performance was put at risk due to changes needed for the jet engines, which resulted in a considerable weight increase. The constant need for speed put stress on the aircraft's structure, necessitating costly fuselage changes in order to reach even higher speeds. In August 1954, the Sea Dart demonstrated its ability to go beyond the sound barrier in spite of these impediments upon. It was the only seaplane to reach such speeds, which was a historic accomplishment. But the problems facing the Sea Dart were far from over. The aircraft was still undergoing flight testing in November 1954, and the project was beset by expensive revisions. Then, on November 4, 1954, a sad event would cloud the history of the Sea Dart. A prototype Sea Dart, flown by Charles E. Richbourg, broke apart in midair during an aviation display over San Diego Bay. An experienced Navy veteran, Richbourg, unintentionally overloaded the aircraft. Despite being saved, he eventually passed away from his wounds. The U.S. Navy had a dramatic change in its strategic thinking in 1956, which had a major impact on the choice made about the Convair Sea Dart program. The Sea Dart was one of the most notable examples of the early seaplane fighters that the Navy had invested in. The Navy did, however, reevaluate its priorities as a result of modifications to tactical doctrine and the effective integration of supersonic fighters on carrier decks. The program suffered a significant blow when Richburg's plane went down, which made the Navy even less interested in it. As a result, the Sea Dart program lost its production status and was reclassified as experimental. The two surviving prototypes were never given the chance to fly although three service test models were finished. Only three of the five sea darts that Convair produced in San Diego, California, were able to take to the air. The sea dart was formally placed on hold and put away in 1957. Some of the remaining four prototypes were kept in reserve until 1962, although they were withdrawn in 1957. Notably, 
at least one F2Y remained in storage by 1962, even after it was retired and had not been flown since 1957. As a result, the aircraft was redesigned as YF-7A in accordance with the 1962 U.S. Tri-Service Aircraft Naming Scheme. The Convair Sea Dart was the only seaplane to break the sound barrier, giving it a special position in aviation history. Acknowledging its historical significance, Convair gave one of the Sea Darts to a museum in 1963, but for 20 years, this aircraft sat in Convair's storage yard. Thanks to committed volunteers who worked on its repair, it didn't find a new home at the San Diego Air and Space Museum in Balboa Park until 1984. After being carefully moved, the Sea Dart was put on display in front of the museum. The Sea Dart gave a lot of information to the U.S. Navy when it came to supersonic capable seaplanes, and it taught them many lessons along the way. The Sea Dart was supposed to counter the Soviet Union's Caspian Sea Monster that utilized the ground effect to travel high speeds on the water. It carried multiple surface-to-ground missiles that was capable of destroying land targets from far away. Although it was perceived as a threat, the Soviet Ekranoplan never got to fly just like the Sea Dart, ending a long discussion between naval aviation combat. If you like experimental planes, you'll love this next one involving the first ever experimental space shuttle that could bomb any place on Earth. And of course, it was built by the Nazis.